<laughs> the response in terms of unity of purpose. Because Omulo's version is that we have to take part in politics. Yes. And he has clearly drawn his line that join a party that is already existing. Yes. Thank you, Trevor. What I would say is uh, what Muhammad said about the youths being a majority in this country. We cannot have the youths occupying, having 70% in numbers. And when we come to the legislative bodies, they are, they are represented by very few people. When it comes to the, to, the, to, to, to the other arms of government, they're also represented by very few people. So what I would ask is for the youths to come together. Because clearly, as we can see it is, we, we have people who are talking about giving the youths 30%. The youth of this country are 70% in numbers. So when I hear from both divides that youth will get 70%, at least I would say I'm on the right path when I follow somebody who says they are giving 70% because JB believes youths are innovative, youths are the solutions to their own problems, and when they are brought on, on board, and Democratic Party of Kenya, the youth wing is not useless, Ombolo. When we come to the youth wings, like in other parties, our youth wing is not cosmetic. This is not whereby youth come sit when they are idols. This is where youth come sit, make decisions, take them to the management of the party, and the party takes them seriously. That's why I would tell youths across the country, if you feel like you are in a shrinking space in your political party, you'd rather come home to Democratic Party of Kenya where you will, your issues will be heard and you'll not be used as a conveyor belt. For the longest time, Trevor, we've seen youths being used as conveyor belts. They take leaders to positions and the leaders wait for five years. This cannot happen. And as the youth of this country, we have the numbers. As much, they keep telling us you don't have the resources. What they don't remind you is you have the numbers. It's time we stop being the disorganized majority that are ruled by the organized minorities. Yeah, but it is galvanizing these numbers. That's where the problem is, Wangui. How do you bring these numbers together? Because they are split in, for different reasons. Yes, they are split on tribal lines. They are split on uh, party principles. They are split on many. We have a lot of factors that make them split. But I would really urge the youth in this country, we have to have clarity of mind because the problems that we face as a youth, I said, whatever I face in Kiambo, it's probably the same thing somebody in Kisumu is facing. It's probably the same thing somebody in Garissa is facing. So we all have problems. But when we come together, because who will address these problems if we are not on the table? Who will address these problems if we don't take our own to parliament? Who will address these problems if we don't have our own in the county assemblies? What we need is a sizable representation of the youths. Yeah. And we need a friendly party where you don't have to know someone who knows someone for you to be able to get the nominations. Yeah. You need somebody who trusts in the youths, who believes in the youths, and who wants to offer the youths a majority. Okay. And that is Democratic Party of Kenya, okay. of course, and our presidential candidate. Yeah. Asiko, you're running for Senate. Yes. But the, one of the biggest issues you're going to face right now is voter apathy. Young people like yourself are simply not taking their voters' cards. Yes. It is that simple. Yes. They have simply refused. It's not that they, they don't have the opportunity. The second phase is ongoing right now. It's supposed to end on the 6th. IBC's numbers are dismal. We have two more days. Yes. What do you think is the problem and how can that then be addressed? Because when you're on the ground, what do they tell you? You come and speak to them. You say you want to become a senator. What do they tell you? OK, thank you so much, Trevor. You know, first of all, uh, and most of the youth uh, are not aware of what is happening. You see, we need to, more, to do more of civic education uh, on different mainstream media so that this can reach out to more people. And apart from just doing it on media and, and any other platform, we should, the uh, IEBC should go to the grassroots so that it can speak to these youth. You know, most of the youth uh, will not vote because, first of all, they are ignorant. And they're forgetting one thing, that most of the past uh, greatest revolutionaries of the, of the world were made by the youth. Like, for example, if you look at Muhammad Ali, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., when you, when you look at Patrice Lumumba, these were all young people that made revolutionaries that changed the world. This is what the youth are forgetting. And they're also forgetting that if you don't vote, it means you are, you, you are not voting because you are voting out of, you are not voting because you are ignorant and also you are making decisions that will, make, that will affect your future. 
you, you, it will affect whether you will get a job or not. It will affect whether you will get uh, your help for your for you to go to school. It will affect whether you will you will have a good environment for you to survive as a youth. So voter apathy among the youth is an issue that has really that has really really is really on the rampant and really needs to be addressed. I think uh, as much as IBC is going to close the window in just uh, two days, I, I feel like. Well, I feel like something, they need some to create some more space and then they need to do at least more voter civic uh, education, yeah. uh, registration education, so that we have more youth on board. Okay. Because I'm telling you for free, in fact, because of the hard economic times and everything that is going on in this, in this country, uh, I, will, I, will, I will not wish to respond to, to, to my friend Omulo. He's a friend of mine. I will not wish to, ref, to respond to him when he's talking about uh, the hustler narrative because of the hard times in the country. I agree, there are hard times in the country. Uh, I would not wish to respond to him because there are better ways to help the youth other than giving them whatever you guys are giving to the youth. By giving them six thousand. Kindly relax. Kindly mm. let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> Kindly let me finish. <laughs> Because there are better ways of helping the youth other than whatever you guys are offering. If someone gets, has a PhD, you know I have so many friends who have masters, others have PhD. Are you going to give wheelbarrows to these people? No, you cannot give them wheelbarrows. So I feel like uh, most of the youth, they are not part of this, this vo election. They don't want even to be part of this election process because they feel they feel sidelined because they don't have jobs. They are suffering. In fact, when you ask some, they tell you, hey, Mr. Pigakura, in fact, I'll just, I'll just sit at home. In fact, I, in, on that day, I'll be at the drinking spree. You see such kind of things. So I think IBC really needs to come out. It really needs to come out strongly and address these kind of issues. Yeah. It really needs to. Okay. And for my friend, you guys are saying I'm, I'm Bangwingui. And for us in Azimi, we are telling you to Tawapanganga. That is what we will do to you people, but don't worry. <laughs> that is what I'll let you know.